Hey guys, welcome to part one of my keto wedding cake series. I'm gonna be shooting this all in one day, but you're gonna see it in three parts. Super excited to have my trial keto wedding cake built. So let's get started. Welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. And here we make delicious pastries, many from my time as a pastry chef. And my goal is to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoy these recipes, please consider hitting the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, thumbs up, and leave me a comment. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto desserts every Saturday. Today, in this video, we're gonna be doing my first layer of my keto wedding cake. I've already decided on my flavors. I did a test already in a big 12 inch round cake pan, and I still gotta make one more layer, but man, was it delicious. My first layer is gonna be chocolate peanut butter. And I have this keto chow that I love it. This is like one of my favorite flavors, from keto chow, but because I only eat one meal a day now, I never have a chance to eat it. So I thought, could I use it in my cake batter? I'm not gonna have four layers for my wedding cake bottom, for my trial one anyways, cause I had to try it. So I cut it in half and I made like a trifle out of one of the layers. God, it was so good. I've been snacking on it like every night. There was just a couple tweaks that I had to make to my original chocolate cake recipe. I'll link that up there if you haven't seen that to make this perfect. I didn't realize exactly how salty this was cause like I just drink it in drink form. You know, I never made it into a cake, but adding a half teaspoon of salt plus this powder was a little bit too salty. So in this one, I'm just gonna cut the salt right out. And the only other thing was cutting out the espresso powder because we don't really need it in chocolate peanut butter cake. So I already have all my ingredients weighed out here. I'm not gonna go through them all. I will have them all up on the screen for you though, because this is gonna be a very long video if I explain everything that I do that I've already done in other videos. So I have all my dry ingredients here. All my recipes for cake includes powdered sweetener, and that's because we're not whipping sweetener and the eggs together. It's all just in the dry mix. So that way you cut down on graininess that you have in your cake by using the powdered. And I actually, I'm gonna be making a lot of stuff with powdered sweetener today. So I had to grind up my classic monk fruit sweetener in order to have enough powdered for today. I just don't like using that method in things like frostings and we're gonna make fondant and gum paste. And you want very powdered sweetener for those. So I used my classic and just ground it in a coffee grinder for my cake mixes. So just gotta mix all those together. I got my buttermilk and my butter that I have to warm and melt. I got my 12 inch cake pan here and a single batch was a decent thickness for a cake layer. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing one single batch of my cake, but instead of doing two eight inch or two nine inch pans, I'm doing one 12 inch. The only other thing I, changed was obviously the time it takes for it to bake. And also I dropped the temperature down from 350 to 325. So I'm gonna preheat the oven now. You just don't want the outside to be done and the inside to be raw and it to start burning on the outside of your cake. I'm reusing my cake round from my last one. You wanna make sure you spray it. Lay that down in there. I say the one thing I forgot about this cake batter is how thick it gets. So the best way to do it is to get all your wet ingredients, take it off the mixer, dump in all your dry at once, mix really fast and get it into your pan. Because I ended up it being so thick, when I popped it out, there was like holes where I couldn't get the batter down flat like in the pan because it was just so thick. So that's the only real big tip I have, but I'm gonna get this guy going and into the oven. I 
Okay, I got it all in there. I did a little bit better this time than I did last time getting it in there quicker. But you wanna just make sure you level this really well. It doesn't really move when it bakes. So you wanna make sure you have the batter where you want it before you even throw it into the oven. So I made sure it was nice and smooth on top and as even as I could get it. I'm popping this into the oven for 40 minutes. I'm gonna do 20, turn 20. But while that's baking, we're gonna get on to some keto fondant. Okay, time to get on to this fondant. Now it has some, ex I have some explaining to do with what I did. I just found a regular fondant recipe. It was just heavy cream, gelatin, corn syrup, and powdered sugar. Now, I tried a couple failed experiments with using peanut butter instead of corn syrup. That did not work. But I figured out I could make a corn syrup out of allulose and make my wedding cake look flawless, which is what you use fondant for, is just to make it just look picture perfect. I figured out black fondant using black cocoa powder. Today, I'm going to show you how to make red fondant. I wanted a red fondant. I wanted color on my cake without using dyes. So that was the biggest challenge. It wasn't making the fondant. It was trying to figure out how I was going to make black and red fondant with no coloring. I happened upon this randomly at Walmart in the protein aisle where there's all the protein powders and all that kind of stuff. It's Power Beets. It's pomegranate flavored. It's only two carbs for a scoop of it, which this is technically gonna be used on my boyfriend's layer. We're gonna have all separate layers for the cake. The bottom is for me, the middle's for him, and the top is a mix of both for us to have on our first anniversary. I didn't really too care too much about the carbs, I was excited that I was going to be able to make a red fondant without any red food coloring. I already have 100 grams of powdered monk fruit erythritol blend in my mixer bowl. I'm not sure if any other powdered sweetener will work. I just got a bag of Boca Sweet powdered. I have not tested it yet though, so I'm not sure if it acts the same as the powdered monk fruit erythritol. But you want something really powdered. Like the powdered allulose, it's not like confectioner's sugar. It's not that powdered. It's more powdered than a Locanto granular classic sweetener, but it's not as powdered as a confectioner's sugar. I'm gonna add 50 grams of this powder to it. Each one of these little scoops is five grams, so I'm gonna do 10 of these. It's pretty much exactly right on. And the only super yummy tasting, just this powder I'm getting in my mouth. I didn't try it just by itself, but it smells really good. But all that's in it is non-GMO beetroot powder, non-GMO organic fermented beetroot powder, and then other ingredients are guar gum, citric acid, natural berry flavors, and something I can't pronounce, rubidioside A, and silica. I think a little bit better than red food coloring. Okay, so that part's ready to go. I have my dough hook on my mixer. We're only gonna need that for a minute just to get the initial mix going and then we're gonna just go and do it by hand. So we need 56 grams of heavy cream or quarter cup. And say this is like the only kind of hard part, getting all your gelatin in this cream, cause it's a lot of gelatin. I made the mistake of like just trying to let it bloom on its own and it really doesn't work. You gotta like mix it up. And it did not say that in the directions on the fondant recipe I found. So the first couple trials were a little bit messy because I could not get the gelatin into the cream. What I did on the rest of them, 22 grams of gelatin, which is about two tablespoons, because you're never going to get all this to bloom just having it on the surface. You got to like mix it in and get it all soaked into that cream. So what I do, I just take my spoon I'm using, get it all saturated in there because otherwise if you have any that is not saturated by cream it'll just stay chunky in your gelatin when you go and melt it so you want to make sure it is all super saturated by that cream this whole time you could be doing your allulose syrup but i didn't want to have to like worry about overcooking it while i'm showing you guys all this other stuff so it's all saturated get that all off your spoon 
double check, make sure you have no powder anywhere. The directions for the original recipe just said, let bloom for two minutes uh, in your cream. And I'm like, how is that gonna bloom that much gelatin just sitting on top of the cream? It doesn't work. So you gotta mix it up. Okay, now that that's ready to go, turn on our allulose here. This is 120 grams of allulose, and I just put water in it just to get it going. The amount of water really doesn't matter. But once this is cooked to your syrup, it is gonna be a half cup of corn syrup. So I have a half cup measuring cup here that we're gonna pour it into once it is the right color and temperature, 290. You want it just starting to turn not clear anymore. A little tiny bit of brown, not much at all. And I already pre-sifted all my powdered sweetener that I had. I had one bag left. I went through, this is bag number three on testing fondants and gum paste. We're at 224. I'm gonna put this into the microwave 30 seconds. You want it all completely melted. It's almost melted in there. Give it a little whiskey whisk. This doesn't smell great. <laughs> okay, so that is just over 30 seconds. And all your gelatin is melted. There's no hunks in there. That's what you want. And it's okay if this gets a little bit hard while you're waiting for your allulose syrup because once you put the hot allulose syrup in there, it's gonna all melt. I feel like we're almost there. Yeah, a lot of times I go by eye on this stuff because sometimes the thermometer ain't always right. <laughs> I think a lot of it depends on the size of your pot and the amount that you're using inside your pot, what temperature you get up to. It seems like it's almost there. I took it really far one time and it was fine. I had it almost like a golden color, which is why my white fondant looks a little bit off-white. I say that's right. It only says 260. Just starting to get a little bit golden in there. I want a half cup. We got a little bit less. That's okay. You want all the gelatin combined in there. I couldn't believe when this worked. So now we have corn syrup. So what else can we do? Crazy. I'm so excited to have this as an option now. All those recipes that call for corn syrup. So we're going to pour this right in the center of our powder here. Careful not to burn yourself because it is very hot still. As much of that gelatin in there as possible. So you want to put this on and just get it combined. I measured out an extra 50 grams of powdered sweetener. I'm not sure exactly how much we'll need. I made this with the cocoa powder yesterday and I needed way less than I thought I would need. So I'm starting low and I'll add more if we need it. It's not very thick right now, so I'm gonna add more of this in there. Try to get almost like a thick dough. Scrape it down a little. Dough is starting to form. Still very sticky though. <laughs> See the dough is starting to form. Definitely gonna need some more though. So I'm gonna measure out another 50 grams. The original recipe was 600 grams of powdered sweetener. I think we're up to 250 grams of powder. I'm only gonna add half this. If you add too much powder, it gets too stiff and you don't want that. Finally, we're starting to get a sticky dough. So, and I'm gonna take notes so that I can write this recipe for you guys. Isn't this color awesome? So excited. Hey, at this point, when it starts to become a dough, I get my hands kind of covered, I try to. <laughs> it's not a clean process. Mm, sticky. It's like playing with your food. It's one of the reasons I love pastry, because it was like playing. You're basically making a Play-Doh out of edible ingredients. Now is when you just add powdered sweetener to make it like a dough. A little bit sticky still, but not too bad. <laughs> Where I put it on my work surface. I've got a bunch of powder in the bottom still, so it's not all in there yet. So I flour my surface some here. Oh, sugar it, I guess. About your 
gonna be Play-Doh. <laughs> when I start kneading in powdered sweetener. Eh, it's like Play-Doh. Start getting too sticky, get more powdered sweetener on your board. I know it seems like a not fun process, but I enjoy this kind of stuff, so. And you don't want to add too much sweetener, because like I said, if it gets too stiff, you can't roll it out anymore, so. Start getting too sticky, just add a tiny bit more. You want it nice and soft still. Comes in handy here is a bench scraper, which mine is over here. So much fun. It's so cool that I get to do this again. I haven't worked with fondant in a while. I thought I'd not be able to doing keto. Look at that. Almost not sticky anymore. There's only one more ingredient in this and that's some butter and that keeps it from being sticky also. So I'm going to get 42 grams of butter, which is three tablespoons. This is the really messy part. <laughs> oh, 41. So close. Now you got to massage that in and your dough is still warm. So it's going to melt and going to get kind of messy. This is what I was doing yesterday when Adam's like, what is going on in here? I'm like, I'm just making fondant. <laughs> if you need to add more powdered sweetener, you can too. Ooh. Oh no, it's all on the board. <laughs> you don't want it too sticky or too dry. Like a dough. Play dough. <laughs> hey, I'd say that is pretty well mixed together. You can always add more powdered sweetener when you go to roll it out too. So if it ends up being too soft and too sticky still, you can add powdered sweetener then. So I'm gonna double wrap this and put it into a Ziploc bag. It has to rest in the refrigerator for about four hours. Cake is out of the oven. It is cooked. A toothpick will start coming out clean at like 20 minutes because there's so much butter in it. It's not, and it's so thick. It's not really like a regular batter. So you can't tell it's done. So that's one reason why I did a test, because I had no idea how long it was gonna take to bake. 40 minutes I found was like the perfect time. Setting this on a cooling rack to cool completely, and then we gotta pop it out and get it chilling so that we can slice it and fill it. Okay, our chocolate cake is beyond cool now. It's been sitting for quite some time. A little trick I do is just banging the side and making sure that all the sides are released. Now I'm a little ill-prepared. I do not have any 12 inch cake rounds, which you really should have a cake round. These are the ones I'm using, like this is what I'm gonna have my wedding cake on, but there should be another barrier in between this and the cake. When the big time comes to make my wedding cake, I will have a 12 inch cake round, but I do not have one today. Luckily I have like five of these in the pack, so that's what I'm using. Came out way nicer this time. Last time I had a bunch of these craters all over the bottom of the cake. I could not get the cake batter in fast enough. So there is our cake. We're gonna get on to making the filling for this and we're gonna slice it and fill it. Okay, so the filling for my chocolate peanut butter cake layer is gonna be a batch of my peanut butter mousse recipe. So I'll link that up there for you. I'm gonna put all the ingredients on the screen. I'm not changing this at all. The biggest thing is to figure out if I have enough to fill. I'm only going to have two layers to fill. In my final product, I want to have enough mousse to fill three layers of the wedding cake. So I got my cream cheese in there. I'm gonna whip this all up and then we'll get on to cutting the cake and filling it. Oh, there's still one more thing that we need to do before we can cut it and fill it. I'll show you after I get this peanut butter mousse done. We got our silky creamy peanut butter mousse. We gotta work a little quick here because we don't want that getting like too soft and weepy. But I made a milk chocolate ganache last night and 
I'm using this as our filling barricade. It's something we do to make all our wedding cakes look super professional and very clean and nice when they get sliced into. There's always some kind of buttercream or something around the edges of the layer to keep the filling in and also to just make it look completely filled. Because if you don't do that and you go to frost the edges, you might not get it all in there and it won't look as nice when you slice it. Also, you don't want to fond in just a bare cake. You want to have a base frosting of something to have something for the fondant to stick to when you cover your cake. So I'm gonna do whipped ganache cause I just prefer a whipped ganache as opposed to like a chocolate buttercream. So I just gotta whip this up, get it in a piping bag and then we'll get to filling. The longer you whip it, the lighter it's gonna get. You wanna give it like a scrape down. You see you got streaks of stuff that's not as whipped up. Apparently I wasn't recording the front camera at all. Oh well. You're gonna have the overhead with crappy audio. Sorry. But we're gonna get this into a piping bag and get our stuff cut. We're not gonna need it all in there because we're gonna use some to base frost too. So here is our first layer. We'll get that undone here. You ideally want this refrigerator cold, but I didn't have time to really put it in the refrigerator or anything. We wanna get a little bit of frosting down on the cake board. Normally you'd put this on a 12 inch round cake board instead of having it directly on whatever you're using. So that's done on there. Then we gotta slice the other guy. And I wish I had a longer cake knife, but this is what they gave us in pastry school. Completely stupid in my, my opinion. So we're gonna take and go right in the center of the cake. And I go all the way around first. Kind of scoring it. And then when you get back to where you scored, you start inching in your knife. Try to keep it as flat as possible. If you don't have it flat, you're going to end up going up in the middle of the cake. And you don't want that. You want to keep it nice and level. And you'll know when you get all the way through. Go all, this should be cut all the way through. Yep. There you go. Good to go. So we're going to set this one aside and we'll get to filling that one. So I'm not going to do probably a very thick layer of filling. I don't want to make this really tall. Because if you do and you don't put enough filling in it, you're going to have a sunken in layer. So I'm just going to do a short layer of ganache all the way around. I'm definitely out of practice on all this stuff so you're gonna have to bear with me. So it's just a thin layer all the way around and then since we have two layers we're filling I'm gonna try and cut this right in half so kind of smooth it out a little bit try to figure out what half of the filling is. You can also use portion scoops, which I might do that on the final product. Just divide it in half. So I'm thinking one and a half batches of this mousse should be good for three layers of filling. Move this out to the edge. You don't want it any thicker than your chocolate that you put around the edge. Gotta make sure you're flat in the middle. Now, if you're a little bit higher than your filling around the edge, you might need to bring it down a little. It's always easier to pick it up or get down low and see if you're even. To make sure you are completely even, because we're gonna be base frosting this, you can go around the edge and squeeze out the chocolate that's gonna be around the edge. That way you know you're completely flat. Just like that. <clears throat> All right, I'm still a little sick. We're gonna take this layer, put it right on top. Hopefully get it right on the first try here. 
I'm not doing the layers super thick because my layers of cake are pretty thick, but I might do a little bit thicker on the final product. We'll see. So do the same thing again. The rest of the mousse. I think this was a little bit more mousse. So unfortunately we gotta take a little out we don't want it to be bigger than the other layer. Next time I might weigh out all my ingredients too and like add them up and figure out what a third is. That way I can have it very precise for my actual wedding cake. You don't want it bulging in the middle either. So don't be tempted to add more than you think you can get away with. If you're bulging in the middle, it'll make for a very uneven and not stable wedding cake. Everything has to be pretty even. When you go to stack two more layers on top of this, your base is like the most important layer because it all starts off from there and it needs to be balanced. And make sure it's level. Yeah, we can definitely go a little bit more filling next time. I always try to put nicest layer on top and be careful not to break it because you're flipping it yeah that's going to be at one more layer high so that'll be nice i wish i would add a fourth layer but i had to try it now we got to base coat this and because we have a bunch in here i'm just going to go around squeeze it all out and i'm going to get my bigger spatula for this just want a base frost on this and then we're going to put it in the refrigerator to chill before we cover it in fondant. Just cover the whole top first. Your wheel to turn it around. Take the rest of our frosting. I just take a scoop at a time. We go around the side. Squish it in. Doesn't matter how this looks, it's just a crumb coat because we're covering it in fondant. Just want to make sure it's nice and even because whatever little lumps or bumps you have, it's going to show up in the fondant if you do it thin. If you do a thicker layer, you usually can hide most bumps. I don't know if we're going to have enough to do a thick layer of fondant or a thin layer of fondant. One more scoop. So that was an eight ounce batch of ganache. So that was enough for this cake. So that's good to know. Smooth out the top. You want it nice and squared up. And this is where if for some reason you are unlevel, you want to fix that and make sure it is level. Do you have to add more frosting in somewhere? We're gonna call that good. <sighs> Gotta pop this into the refrigerator and let it get completely solid before we cover it in fondant. We're gonna let that layer get completely solid and we'll see you in part three to cover, stack, and decorate my trial wedding cake. Hope you guys enjoyed this video on a little wedding cake tutorial on how to Hope you learned some things. I was happy to share my fondant recipe with you guys. Don't forget to check out the blog links and my Amazon links in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.